In this third section of the Mental Status Examination Training, we will learn about memory. My name is Tom Field and I produced and narrated this training series. Let's return to the overview. In this training series, we learn via a scaffolding process. In this section of the training, we will learn about memory, and during guided practice, we'll review affect and mood and thought process. At the conclusion of the eight sections is an end of training test. I encourage you to follow the handout as we progress. You can use scrap paper if you'd like for guided practice. And there's going to be occasions during guided practice video case studies where an element of the mental status examination is not fully apparent. And in those instances, it's okay to indicate, unable to assess. The definition of memory is the storage and recall of both current information, known as working memory, and past information. Memory has two facets that we're going to explore in this training, amnesia and consciousness. Amnesia uh, has two important facets, anterograde and retrograde amnesia, and we'll be exploring these using examples from the mini mental state exam. And consciousness has two important facets as well, dissociation and regression, which we'll be exploring. Not explored in this training, but important to assessing consciousness, is orientation. Orientation has four parts, orientation to time, per place, person, and situation. An orientation to time is an awareness of day, month, and year. An orientation to place is an awareness of current location, for example, your counseling office. An orientation to person is an awareness of the client's own name and your name. And an orientation to situation is an awareness of why the client is being assessed. Also explored, uh, but not in a great deal of depth and important for you to understand is intact memory. This is appropriate short and long-term storage and recall considered normal or typical. And in instances where the client seems to be um, demonstrating fairly good short-term and long-term memory, you would indicate intact memory in the mental status examination. Anterograde amnesia is described as memory loss for events after the onset of amnesia. In the diagram below, the color of the circles indicates the client's ability to recall information. In anterograde amnesia, the client is better able to recall past events. And here this is illustrated by the circle being a lighter color than current events, illustrated by the circle being darker color. Retrograde amnesia is defined as memory loss for events before the onset of amnesia. And again, using the diagram below, the client is better able to recall current events, indicated by the circle being a lighter color, than past events, the circle being a darker color to indicate this. As an aside, it's worth noting that some forms of memory problems don't have a traumatic event or incident that occurs. That's the central circle here. For example, Alzheimer's disease does not have a traumatic event or incident that precipitates amnesia. However, even in Alzheimer's, for example, a person might be better able to recall current events than past events or vice versa. And so understanding the difference between retrograde and anterograde amnesia is important. So let's explore memory and consciousness using some video case studies. Anterograde amnesia is described as memory loss for events after the onset of amnesia. Again, this is associated with brain injury, dementia, and substance abuse. And you would assess for confabulation if the client is demonstrating anterograde amnesia. And confabulation is defined as an attempt to justify a false response, meaning if a person gives incorrect information, 
they may attempt to defend that information as being correct um, when it is in fact false if the interviewer prompts further or prods further. Let's watch an example. So I'm going to tell you three words that I would like for you to try to remember and repeat back to me okay. in a few minutes. Okay. Um, so try to remember these in the order in which I tell them to you. The three words are cherry, car, shoes. So repeat those back to me. Cherry, car, shoes. Great. So let's talk about something else for a minute. Um, maybe we can go back to before the accident and um, maybe talk a little bit about your work. Oh yeah, sure. Before the accident, as you know, I was working in the, um, the fabric mill down at home. And um, I loved being there because I got to work with all these different fabrics. I'm a quilter, so it's where I went. I, you know, I would be able to get you know, special pieces of fabric to take home work on my quilts. But anyway, so I was, I'd been working at the fabric mill for a long time, had my position, I was moving into a management role there, um, really enjoyed the group of ladies that I was working with. Everyone got along well on the team. We all, you know, we were high productivity in our particular division, and so everything was going really well, and I was moving up, making a making a place for, for myself in my career, you know, before, and then the accident happened. Wow. Yeah. Sounds like you like working there. Mm. So let's return back to those three words. Do you remember the three words in the order in which I told them to you? Hmm. Was there a fruit in there? One of them was a fruit. Hmm. I can't remember. The client is able to recall past events in fair detail, they talk about being a quilter in a fabric mill and enjoying that line of work before their accident, but then cannot recall the three words that the interviewer provided at the beginning of the segment. Those three words were cherry, car, and shoes. The client therefore has problems with working memory, short-term memory, and if the client has memory loss for events after the onset of amnesia, they have enterograde amnesia. Retrograde amnesia is described as memory loss for events before the onset of amnesia. This is associated with brain injury, dementia and substance abuse, and again you would assess for confabulation if the client is demonstrating retrograde amnesia. Let's watch an example. I'm going to tell you three words and I want you to try to remember them in the order in which I tell them to you. Those three words are apple, table, and penny. Would you repeat those to me? Sure. Apple, table, penny. Great. So moving on, I'd like to ask you a couple questions about your past. Would you tell me a bit about your wedding day? Oh, oh, wedding. It, you know, it was it was a really long time ago. Hmm. Maybe it was in the summer. I don't really remember very well. Hmm. Is there anything about your wedding day that stands out to you in your mind? Um. I'm sure I had a really nice dress. Do you remember what your husband was wearing, for example? Oh, not, not particularly. Pro probably a suit. Maybe it was black. Okay. And returning back to those three questions that I asked you earlier. Uh, three words, I'm sorry. Do you remember what the three words were that I had told to you? Mm -hmm. um, they were apple, table, and penny. Are you sure those were the three words? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm completely sure. Okay, great. In this example, the client can't recall past events. The clinician asks the client to recall events from her wedding day, which would be considered a fairly significant day in someone's life. 
a day that most people would be able to recall at least some details about. The client can't really recall when it happened. She says maybe it was in the summer. She can't really recall what she was wearing. I think I was wearing a dress. And she can't recall what her husband was wearing. Perhaps he was wearing a suit. This inability to recall specifics about this day indicates problems with long-term memory. In contrast, the client can recall the three words the clinician gave at the beginning of the segment, apple, table, and penny. And this memory loss for events before the onset of amnesia rather than after is indicative of retrograde amnesia. Dissociation is a form of altered consciousness. It's a trance-like state, and the client often appears disconnected from emotions. This often occurs in response to painful emotional content and can be an associated symptom of trauma. Let's watch an example of dissociation. I wonder what you're thinking about right now. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, you know, I, I was just kind of... Mm, I don't know, just kind of out there for a second. Oh. Huh. Were you aware how long you were thinking? Mm, no, just, just a couple seconds. It's been about five minutes. Really? Yeah. Um... We were talking about something pretty difficult to talk about, actually. Really? Yeah, do you remember what we were talking about? I have no idea. I don't, I don't remember you asking me anything. This client suddenly jolts from their trance-like state at the interviewer's prompt about them being in, in deep thought, asking what they're thinking about. When they emerge from this trance-like state, they are also unaware of the length of time they were in that state. It was about a five minute increment and the client is unaware of that, and they have a lapse in memory. They cannot recall what was being talked about before they entered the trance-like state. And the clinician reveals that it was content that's particularly difficult to talk about, meaning it's probably fairly emotional content. This trance-like state in connection with the lapse in memory and the client's unawareness of time is indicative of dissociation. And you can see how this impacts the counseling relationship. If the client is unaware to talk about difficult emotional content without going into a trance-like state and then forgetting what was talked about before they entered the trance, it's very difficult to make headway onto some pretty central issues. And so Dissociation is usually an important symptom to be aware of in counseling. Regression is described as a return to a childlike state. It's another impairment in consciousness. The person is usually unconscious and unaware of their regression. And if they are aware, it is usually a symptom of manipulation rather than true regression. Let's watch an example of regression. scared. What are you scared about? I don't want to be by myself. This client says in a childlike voice that they are, quote, scared, and quote, don't want to be by themselves. Their childlike high-pitched voice, in addition to the simplistic language used, sounds uh, almost um, immature, almost childlike, um, almost infantile. It's almost like a, they, they have uh, somehow returned to a earlier stage of development. Clients may also use language such as, I did bad, I want to be a good girl, fairly simplistic language. Um, and when that's paired with this high-pitched childlike voice, it indicates regression. It's now time for some guided practice for you to try your hand at coding memory and consciousness. 
In the next series of video case studies, you're going to code affect, mood, form of thought, and if it's present, attention and speed of thought, in addition to memory. And for memory, you're going to look at anterograde amnesia, retrograde amnesia, dissociation, and regression. Let's watch the first video. So I've been thinking a lot lately, even having dreams about uh, sort of those war scenes. And I remember in particular uh, the one time when my buddy uh, got shot up pretty bad and uh, he lost his leg. You seem deep in thought. Uh, I'm sorry, what? What? I'm, what? Pause the video now and assess the client for affect, mood, form of thought, attention and speed of thought, and memory. This client has a blunted or flat affect. We can't code congruence here because it's not fully apparent whether their affect, their expressed emotion is congruent or not. While talking about the sadness of losing a friend in war, of a friend who lost their leg, uh, we may think that the client seems depressed and you could code that here. We could also code unable to assess because of the blunted or flat nature of their presentation, it's difficult sometimes to code mood. Um, but certainly you would not co code euthymic here. For thought process, we would code logical because there seems to be you know, connections made between content. There may be rumination as an aside. We don't know enough about this. If they brought up the, uh, the um, experience of war again and again and again, then we would code that, but we don't have enough information at this time. And for memory, we would code dissociation. And we would code dissociation rather than distractible or preoccupied here, because the client seems forgetful of what was discussed. There are some memory problems present. They cannot really recall that they were talking about the war, um, their war memories, when the, they s snap out of that trance. And the client does respond to prompting. With preoccupied, the client may not respond and continue to be uh, immersed deeply in thought. Okay, let's try another video case study. I'm gonna tell you three words and I want you to try to remember them in the order in which I tell them to you. The three words are cherry, chair, and shoe. Okay. Would you repeat those to me? Cherry, chair, and shoe. Great. So maybe let's talk a bit about your college years. How much do you remember about that? Um, well, going back to undergraduate, um, I started in 2000. As a freshman at University of Washington and majoring in psych. And I was doing a minor at the time, but I never finished the minor. And I um, was an independent student. I lived in the dorm for a while. Um, I lived uh, at my parents' for a little while. It was generally, I don't know, it was generally a good time. But I think, you know, I had some the same sorts of problems that a lot of students have. Sometimes it was difficult to make friends, sometimes I wasn't sure what I was doing with myself socially, that kind of thing. Um, what else did you want to know? Oh, I think that's about, about it. So it sounds like you had, a, had an okay experience, but like most students, there were some things that went along with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so going back to those three words that we had talked about earlier, do you remember them in the order that I told them to you? actually remember what the three words were. 
So, no, sorry. Okay. Pause the video now and assess the client for affect, mood, form of thought, attention and speed of thought, and memory. This client's affect seems to be full and congruent. They seem to express their emotion fairly typically or normally in a way that is not restricted. Their mood seems euthymic. While talking about their university years, they seem fairly upbeat. They said generally it was a good time. Their thought process seems logical. They make obvious connections between content and their memory uh, seems to be, there seems to be some element of anterograde amnesia present, because they're able to recall the past events fairly well, but current events, those three words they're asked to recall, they cannot recall, they cannot remember. So we would indicate anterograde amnesia. Okay, let's try the last guided practice video case study. When I get upset, I love to snuggle with my pooch because he gives me such good cuddles. Pause the video now and assess the client for affect, mood, form of thought, attention and speed of thought, and memory. This client's affect seems full and incongruent. For example, they are smiling in a way that seems fairly superficial, forced if you will. And they talk about being upset while smiling at the same time when I get upset. And so it seems incongruent to me. Their mood seems elated, very, very upbeat for being upset, for sure. Euthymic would also be okay, but they do seem to be almost on top of the world in some ways. Um, their thought process seems logical. They make connections between content. However, we don't really have a lot of information here, so it would be okay if you had written in unable to assess. I would definitely write in unable to assess for memory because we don't know if there are long or short-term memory problems. And in terms of consciousness, uh, we would indicate regression here. Because of the client's high-pitched voice and use of fairly childlike phrases such as poochie when describing their dog. Okay, let's review. Today we learned about memory and reviewed amnesia, both anterograde and retrograde amnesia, consciousness, both dissociation and regression, and also briefly went through orientation to time, place, person, and situation. And finally, though it's not written here, we also reviewed intact memory. This concludes section three of the mental status examination training.